Also während meiner Zeit During my time, the whole Obersalzburg was rebuilt. The old farmhouses were torn down. First the barracks were built in 1936 and 37. The Turken was rebuilt. And then, on the way to the motor pool, the administration buildings were built for Dr. Reinhardt. When you go to the barracks on the left side of the road, they built the motor pool, a gas station, and a repair shop. The living quarters were all built along the road toward the Uterau sediment. Then the adjutancy Goring was built. After a remark by Hitler, Bormann immediately built greenhouses. Chief gardener Bueller was in charge of this, along with his gardeners. Later, a mushroom farm was also added. Water wells were tapped. The guesthouse Horror Gall was rebuilt. House Beckstein and the Gutshof estate were built. Everything was built when I was there. From 1936 to the war, the main building measures were carried out. The Platterhof was brought up, rebuilt, and renovated. It had a very modern pneumatic tube, post system, and so on. Roads were built. The Muslanderkopf Tea House was built. It was finished in the summer of 1937. Adolf Hitler went there often, almost every day, but without security measures. No security measures at all. And he was then picked up by the convoy above the Gutshof estate. He also went there with uh, Mussolini or with other prominent guests, or sometimes he went alone in civilian clothes. There was only one guard on the premises, and the guard had to hide because Hitler did not want people in uniform to be on the property. So if anyone had the intention to eliminate Adolf Hitler, it would have been very easy, and not just once. He always said that he did not want any special security measures. If someone wants to eliminate him, then they will do it anyway. Yes. He often went to Muslanerkov, sometimes alone, but Eva often accompanied him. Construction of the Kustein House began in early June 1937, but it was finished on September 18, 1938. At Hitler's direct request, his chauffeur and I had to make training runs. He wanted that. So we had to drive up five, six, seven times. I also went up unofficially beforehand with Mr. Geiger and also with Bormann's driver. We had to be able to drive the curves safely. The U-bend was very risky. No protective wall or safety barrier. And then the day came when the Kustein House was officially put into operation. And from then on, he frequently made visits to the Kustein House. His adjutants always announced them. Mostly he went up with foreign guests or diplomats, but many of the planned visits were canceled. One of them was quite remarkable. In the summer of 1939, when the entire Hungarian government was there, 
the tea was to be served on the Kielstein. Then he suddenly decided that I had to go up and my wife had to go up too. He wanted both of us to come along. My wife was up there several times. There was even a photo there where she was serving coffee. And then we went up there, coffee, cooks, and two servants, and some others, also the operating personnel for the elevator. We prepared everything and waited for the gentleman. Nobody showed up. After a while, I called the Berghoff to find out what was going on. Yes, we were just going to call you. The Führer has canceled the trip. The tea will be served in the big hall. You can come down again. That was the answer. Then we got comfortable for a while and had coffee. That was Hitler's mentality. He changed his plans at every moment and then discarded them again. In July 1940, he made very nasty remarks to his servant Linge and me about the whole Kielstein House affair. And that was as follows. He was opposed to the whole thing, although it was a huge building project. Unfortunately, he never said exactly why, but we suspect that it had somehow come to be too pompous or too expensive for him. He probably gave the suggestion for it, as with the greenhouse and the Gutshof estate. The Kielstein is a protruding mountain, you know. During several walks, he said, this ridge is dangerous, dangerous as lightning. And then he once said, on the mountaintop, one could build a rest area for hikers, a few stone tables and stone chairs so that hikers can have a leisurely snack. You have to support them. And such a thing was, for Bormann, water on his mills, as they say, for the planning of his projects. He immediately took it as a building order and directly looked at the suitable builders and architects such as Speer and Dr. Tote. Bormann asked them if there was a possibility to build a house up there. That was the beginning of the Kielstein House. There was never a direct order from Hitler that a house must be built on top of that mountain. Not that I know, but they carefully taught him, and he also tolerated it. And it was a gift for Hitler's 50th birthday from the party. The Nazis had money, they were swimming in money, but he was always opposed to the project. And now, to the comment in July 1940, after the French campaign, he was around for 14 days, maybe maybe three weeks. He wanted to stay on the Obersalzberg and rest and to prepare his speech for the Reichstag. He wanted to give answers for the campaign against France. Big certificates made of pigskins, bound about 40 by 60 centimeters in size, arrived with the baggage car. Brown, dark brown silver swastika and Sovereignty Eagle on it. These were all promotion certificates for the generals and the field marshals. They were all lying on the floor of his study. He had to sign them, but he was always so busy. One time he came back on the Muslanikov tea house. His servant Linge came to me. Herbert, greetings from the boss. During dinner, I was told to go up to his study and prepare his desk. He wanted to do the signatures today. At that time, the war preparations were already running at full speed. What was officially not yet known was the attack on Russia and so on. Later on, when he came in his study, he said, we have to finish the signatures today. They want to take me up to the Kielstein house again tomorrow. They want to take me up there again, and I don't even want to go up there. I've already said that. I'll get a headache, and the air is too thin, and the danger of lightning is too high up there. I don't want that, and they want to get me up there so bad. We then put his signature on the documents. The next day, he didn't go up to the Kielstein house, but I don't know why not. He didn't tell anybody, but I have a guess. With the outbreak of the war, he led a very Spartan way of life, always with the reasoning, my soldiers out there don't have that, then I don't need that either. He also ate much less, only a grated apple as a dessert. He drank only skim milk. During the winter, no room could be above 18 degrees Celsius. That's about 64 degrees Fahrenheit.
But to come back to the Kustein House, the whole thing had been built far too lavishly for him. In the midst of the mountains, something so pompous. That project had swallowed vast sums of money. <laughs> 